I'm Leah from Supercharged Food and today I'm speaking with the lovely Annie Leonard from The Story of Stuff. Hi Annie, welcome to Australia. Thank you, I'm having a great time here. Fantastic. Have you been here before? No, it's my first time. I'm, I'm just really, really happy to be here. And I heard you went up to Byron. I did. You know, I flew into Brisbane, met some incredible people there, then went on to Byron and then here. I have to tell you, the reason that I came to Australia, I was invited by this amazing group of sustainability engineers who were having a conference in Brisbane. I was intrigued by that, but the real draw here for me was the incredible viewer base we have here. We have millions of viewers from Australia and incredible enthusiastic emails we get so I, I wanted to come meet these folks firsthand to find out why did they like the story of stuff so much and what can we do to work together to chart a better path ahead Well, before I made the story of stuff, I really did spend over a decade traveling around the world looking at the factories where our stuff is made and the dumps where our stuff is dumped. I like literally snuck into factories in Haiti and China and Pakistan and dumps in South Africa and you know all, all over the place. And when I came back to the United States and saw the incredible consumerism that has just taken over our culture and is spreading globally, I was frustrated that people were not aware of the sort of hidden environmental and health and social costs, the hidden lives of all of our stuff being before we get it and then after we're done with it. So I wanted to figure out a way to talk about that that would be fun and engaging and wasn't all whiny and wonky. You know, sometimes yeah. environmentalists are such nags. Yeah, you know, we exactly. are so whiny and wonky and then we wonder why no one wants to hang out with us. So I was wondering, is there a way to talk about this? It's not about fear and guilt, but it's about let's learn together and work together to make a better path. After um, the Story of Stuff film went viral, I got literally a quarter of a million emails. And at first I used to sit there at night and try to answer them until like 4 o'clock in the morning. And then I just realized this is not going to work because <laughs> the emails just kept coming. And so I wrote a book. So the book um, includes everything that's in the film, but a lot more detail about extraction, production, distribution, consumption, disposal, a lot more detail. It also has a lot of first-hand reporting of what it was like sneaking into factories around the world and interviewing yeah. workers and communities. So it's a lot of real first-hand reporting from... The, you know, the life cycle of all our stuff. It also has a lot of signs of hope. Um, one of the things that I think is really important is that in spite of the very grim data on the planet, there are so many signs of hope. There's so many ways we could do things better. So I have lots of that in the book as well. You know, it's available in about 12 countries, and I understand there's an Australian publisher, so I think it's available here. You know, if not, um, ask your bookstore for it, and hopefully it'll be available soon. Well, over the past um, 20 years, a number of friends and I have gotten six houses in a row together <laughs> right in the downtown city. And we've taken down all the back fences. So we have this huge shared backyard. And so my um, conviction about how much better life is if we invest in community rather, in, rather than stuff, it's not just a theoretical academic analysis, yeah. even though that theoretical academic data backs it up. It's a real authentic experience. So in, in my life, when I need something, whether it's a ride to the airport or child care or mm -hmm borrowing a cupcake pan, rather than turning to the market, I can turn to our community. So this huge shared backyard, and it's all individual houses, you know, every kid knows who their own parent is, it's not a commune or anything, but we share things. We share a pickup truck, and a lawnmower, and a ladder, and we're in this crazy situation now where we increasingly don't know our neighbors, and so every house has to have, you know, a television, a cupcake pan, a power drill, a lawnmower, a tractor, yeah. all this stuff, yeah. and it's crazy for the planet, because we're making all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's crazy for our houses, because our houses are full of all this junk. And it's crazy because we don't know each other. So sharing is a big part of the solution environmentally, economically, and socially. So I walk the talk, and I live that way. And it's my favorite thing about my life is living in community. And I think that's wonderful. Um, so what can people do on an individual level or communities do to make a change? Well, you know, this is one of the great things about such a humongous problem is there are an infinite number of things to do. I feel like we have like a solution smorgasbord buffet. There is something for everyone. So I don't really like to dictate just one thing because I think everyone needs to look at their own interests and their own skills and then look out in the world and figure out where to plug in because you've got to do something that's fun because it's your life. You know, why do something that's not fun when life could be so fun? So if you're an artist, think about ways to use art as a medium to communicate this message. If you're an educator, Think about ways to incorporate environmental and social justice awareness in your teaching. You know, whatever you are, if you're a doctor think, or a nurse, think about ways to make your hospital less a source of environmental ills. I mean, there's really an infinite number 
of ways to get involved. The one thing that I do think, though, for folks, if you think about one particular thing, one thing that would really help is if we all work on developing an internal metric of satisfaction. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that we are bombarded by messages yeah. all day telling us that you are inadequate. And they actually call it inadequacy marketing. Mm-hmm. Your clothes are wrong, your skin mm-hmm. is wrong, your hair is wrong, your car is wrong, your furniture yeah. is wrong. Everything is wrong. Yeah. And the more that we can develop a resistance and look inside ourselves to decide whether or not to feel good about ourselves, look inside ourselves as opposed to all these external trappings, it liberates us from this consumer mania, and then we have our whole life to go out and make the world better and build friends and community. Hi, I'm Lee from Supercharged Food. We've been talking to Annie Leonard in Bondi from The Story of Stuff. Thank you so much for watching.